guys welcome back to the channel I hope you had a Merry Christmas it is a, a nice cool evening here and I wanted to put together a quick video showing you guys my sleeping platform that I've got in the forerunner so I built this probably a good I don't know three or four years ago long before had the rooftop tent in that roof rack and anything like that so started getting into camping wanted to sleep out of the vehicle so I kind of needed something because just laying the seats down didn't really provide a nice flat surface. So I had sort of uh, a few wants and requirements and I kind of put those down on paper and I just started designing around it. You, you'll tell uh, one of the main things about it is I can have the back seats up with this still in the truck, which was a big one because this isn't a solely dedicated overlanding rig for me. Uh, for a long time, it was my dedicated driver and my overlanding rig. So uh, I still needed to be able to, you know, have passengers in the back seat. So that was a big one. Uh, I wanted it to double as storage for gear and tools. And I wanted it to be uh, pretty much deployable or operated by one person. So I didn't want it to have to have two people to extend it out into its sleeping position. So on a normal day-to-day -day basis, it stays folded up. Uh, just like this, I've got access to all the all the compartments, and then <laughs> uh, Atlas got excited about something. And then when we want to go camping, we'll uh, we'll get it all set up in that orientation. So these days, it functions more as a storage platform and drawers and all that. But the main intention and design behind it originally was a sleeping platform. Here's the main construction of it. So this flap here ends up being the vertical support flap up front, and that'll make sense here when we actually get it set up. But in order to access these cubbies along the side, you have to flip that up to clear it. And over in this cubby, uh, I've got some support legs for when this is flipped out. So we will need these for sure. And then sometimes I use those longer legs depending on how much weight we're actually gonna have on the platform. So we'll walk around to this side here. Get our seats flip down. Cool. Here's a look at the back side of it. I sloped it or slanted that back piece so I could get as much storage as possible in my drawers. And that pretty much follows the slant of the back of the seats when they're in their upright position. These red tabs are pretty much tie down points for if I'm hauling anything in the back. So what we've got along the side here, I've got some little keyhole plates. And on these supports, I've got screws. So these lock into place there. And then now this supports the, uh, so now this supports the bed when it's flipped over. It, it, it does have a, a piano hinge going most of the length of the board, but I wanted added support. So we'll do the same on the other side. Pop in just like that. Cool. Now we just need to reach forward, grab this, and flip it over. This front leg comes down and sets right in there. So again, all these measurements, um, I don't know them off the top of my head. It's been too many years. But obviously I measured that such that it would provide a perfectly now flat surface from head to toe so that's nice and then those supports actually have magnets in them and i've got some magnets embedded in the underside of this so they'll actually just clip into place if i need them like i said it all depends on what what we're set up to do that day cool so that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. Flip your seats down, 
uh, put in your two supports and flip it over and you're ready to rock and roll. Typically what we would do from here is put down a blanket because I've got several exposed uh, piano hinges and some of the corners are a little sharp and don't want to pop our uh, sleeping pad. So we'll generally put down a thick blanket, sleeping pad, and then our sleeping bags on top of that. And it's it's been great. Um, like I showed you earlier, we've got compartments on each side. All this is wrapped in a marine carpet. So that's nice, adds a little padding. Uh, the main construction of the platform is a three quarter plywood for 23, 30 seconds, I think. Got storage in here, storage in there. Minimal, but I'll put stuff that I don't need to get to very often that's kind of thin. So maybe some emer emergency gloves or hat, stuff like that. Same over here. Got toe strap, emergency jump starter pack, gator, stuff like that. And then I've got two main drawers. So I've got a short drawer on the left that only goes back to say maybe right about here. And that's because I actually installed a subwoofer box inside of here. Uh, so that actually sits back here. I've got a metal grate to allow sound to come through. And that provides us with a short drawer over here. Generally we'll put our bedding and whatnot in this drawer. And then on the right side, I've got a full length drawer that goes all the way back and it can store a ton. So a step back here, you can see how long that is. You can fit full length long cha lawn chairs. Uh, if I'm going to the gun range, uh, depending on what guns I've got with me, I can fit some of my carbines or whatever in here in gun bags. So that's nice being able to keep that out of sight. But generally what I always have in here is my tools, an axe, saw. Uh, this is equipment for airing up and airing down my tires. Chairs, TP, and nature calls, you never know. And that's pretty much it. So in order to help the drawers slide smoothly, here you can see the uh, subwoofer tucked back in there. And that's sort of why I sized the drawers like I did. But anyway, I didn't want to use drawer slides because that takes up about a half inch or so on each side, minimizing what all you can actually store in them. So what I did was I, I bought some of this UHMW tape. It's pretty much like a 32nd of an inch thick. It's a very slick uh, tape and it's adhesive backed and it's very durable. So I lined these bottom rails with this UHMW tape and that allows the plywood drawers to be able to slide nice and smoothly along them. There's probably some slicker solutions to uh, this problem, but like I said, generally that's going to be some ball bearing drawer slides. And I really didn't want to have to shrink the size of my drawers in order to fit those slides. So this has worked really well and I'm happy with it. The shape and contour of the flip over section all I don't know if you noticed when I flipped it over but it all hugs almost perfectly to the profile of the inside of the cabin so I'm trying to maximize the amount of sleeping space I have while still allowing it to function properly all the little details sort of add up um, and yeah if you take your time you can make it look pretty decent and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There's definitely some things that I would probably change uh, if I had to do it all over again. But all in all, the ease of use, it's there. Um, I love how easy it is to get this set up just as a single person. Um, but a few learning things, I guess one, uh, I, I created this at the height that it's at. One, to maximize storage space in here. But two, uh, because of that subwoofer, unfortunately that was a priority for me at the time and I wish it wasn't because when Mary and I are sleeping in here, we've got our sleeping pad, which is only a couple inches thick. You cannot sit upright and that sucks. Um, that sucks big time. That has been pretty much our biggest gripe with this is not being able to sit up in there 
uh, when you're getting undressed or getting dressed in the morning, whatever, it really sucks sitting in there playing card games at night. You have to be kind of hunched over and it's really uncomfortable. So if I had to do it again, I would probably lower the overall height of the platform so that it allowed us to sit upright in there. Um, and if you're doing this on a different vehicle besides a third gen 4Runner, maybe that's not a big problem. Maybe you've got more headroom to begin with. But for me, that was a big, a big headache. Along with that, if I would have gotten rid of the subwoofer, I could have had two full length drawers and had just that much more storage, which would have been nice. And luckily this worked out pretty well for us because Mary and I aren't exactly tall people. I'm like 5'8 on a good day and she's closer to like 5'4, five, 5'5. Five, five. So with our pillows in here, we've got, I would say just enough clearance to be comfortable. If I was six foot, I'm not sure that this vehicle would be well suited to having, you know, two people sleeping in here. You could probably swing it diagonally as a solo dude. That's been another thing that's made this uh, work so well for us is, yeah, we're little people. So yeah, guys, that about covers it. Um, if you have any questions about specifics about this build or how I went about doing certain things like being able to slide the whole box in there and still have, you know, supports on the side for the, the cubby shells, whatever, uh, drop them down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer your questions. I don't have specifics on dimensions or build plans or anything like that, unfortunately. Uh, if I had decided to do it these days, I would have put together a set of plans, but unfortunately I didn't do that. So yeah, feel free to drop any questions you have down below. Uh, I highly recommend doing something like this. It's a lot cheaper than going out and buying some goose build deck, whatever they, <laughs> whatever they sell for, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. I think I spent probably, I don't know, a hundred, 150 bucks in materials, uh, tops, and then just, just took some time. You know, I, uh, I'm sort of passionate about building my own projects. So that works out. And I did this all with some pretty basic tools. I had a table saw, a circular saw, and that's just about it really. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time and you can end up with something pretty nice like this that served us well for, I don't know, three, four years. This thing's been all over the country and it's held up great. So if you found the video helpful, would love it if you'd hit like, subscribe if you want to see more video content on my third gen 4Runner. Uh, we're also putting out some videos on Mary's fifth gen and just videos of us getting out and exploring. So appreciate it guys, and I will catch you guys on the next one.